Hey guys, welcome back. This tractor here that I showed you in one of my uh, question and answer videos, I've been having a problem with the engine that when you turn the key off, it still wants to keep going. The reason why I'm making a video is because it took me a long time to diagnose the problem and I thought everybody should know this in case they get the same problem. So I'll give you a demonstration of what it's actually doing. then eventually it'll stop when it feels like to but sometimes it won't stop at all so that's a bit of a danger there this wire here goes to solenoid on the carburetor which shuts a valve off when you turn the key off so this works so what happens is the engine keeps burning the fuel that's left in the carb and then basically sometimes it shuts itself off just because it ran out of fuel from that little valve going off so it was pretty hard to figure out because it's not something I come across a lot. So I started by replacing the switch. I had a used one here, so I replaced that. I checked all the wiring, like everything over and over again. And finally, I decided to take the cover off on the engine because there's a little wire here that goes to a terminal and that's where the problem is. So I'm gonna be taking this apart today and showing you how to fix this problem. Removing the two Phillips screws that hold that grill up here. And it's just going to come out. You can pry it out like this. Next, I'm just going to remove the fuel pump from the bracket on the cowling. And it's a 10 millimeter socket that you will use for that. You don't need to disconnect the fuel lines. I'm just basically removing the fuel pump from the bracket so I can access the bolts on the bracket to remove the cowling. So now you're going to need to remove the two 13 millimeter bolts there, the 10 millimeter bolt here, the other 10 millimeter bolt by the oil dipstick, this other 13 millimeter bolt here, and this 10 millimeter bolt there and over here, and then the cowling's going to come off. Now this bracket's gonna come off. Also have to remove the four 5 16 bolts on top of this grill here. Now that you've got all the bolts off, just simply lift the cowling up. Okay, what the problem is, this little diode here, that's the little diode which has the tab that the wire connects on to the other side here and that's for turning the ignition off when you're done uh, using the machine i realized when i took it apart that somebody had disconnected this wire here but if you connect it back it will just run on one cylinder and i'll show you that so probably what they did is they disconnected it and just kept it like that Yeah, it's running on one. So you can see if you have a problem with this diode, it could happen that your motor is going to run on one cylinder, or it may be hard to turn off like it is for me. So. I know if I kept that little wire on, that it would only run on one cylinder. So I'm 100% sure that that's the problem. Now here's the part for that. It's number 809077 from Briggs. And the part is slightly superseded uh, because they put the diodes in the wire itself. So you can see on the engine that there's no diodes in the wires. It's all into the one little box here. So I'm going to have to take that off and then attach this one on. 
So to remove this total diode, you have to remove the 5 16 bolt here. At this point, you can disconnect both wires. If the bolt turns with the nut, it's a 5 16 nut on the other side as well. Be careful when the nut comes off, you don't drop it inside the engine there. So just grab it real good when it's coming off. You can also disconnect the wire and now you've got your diode out. So that's the culprit here, just a little wee part like that, superseded to this. Now I read the instructions in the parts bag there and it said to drill the hole in the cowling to a quarter inch. It's about 3 16 right now. So I'm just going to drill that out. I think the reason for that is because of the insulators that came with the new kit. So I'm going to reinstall that now and just do it as the instructions say. So first of all, you got to put a tab in near the screw, then an insulator, then insert that into the cowling. Next, you need to insert this little insulator as well and you point this side toward the head of the screw. Now next you need to put the washer on and then the nut. So be careful you don't drop them inside the engine there. You can tighten that up by holding the nut and turning the screw on the other side. Now make sure your little tab is lined up this way here so that it doesn't touch the metal. And then reinsert the wire on the tab, which was formerly connected to the diode tab. Now what we need to do is to remove the wires from the coils. And there'll be two of them. Now we need to remove these wires here from each ignition module plugged right underneath. Now the other ignition module, the wire is right underneath over here, so just work it back and disconnect it from here as well. So now grab your new part and with the tab with the hole in, screw it into where the other part of the tab is down there. Now there's a little washer that goes here and a nut. Again, make sure you don't drop that down there. If you do, just shake the cowling on the sides and it should come out the bottom. Now I'm just going to tighten up that nut there and this will be nice and secure. So now these wires one of them goes to the first ignition module and the second one goes to the second ignition module and underneath here there's a little tab for this wire to go on as well. So you got to work the wire underneath all this all the way there. Make sure it's not rubbing on the flywheel. So as you can see there's tabs right underneath the coils there. And just plug it in there. Make sure it's pushed in all the way because there's a lot of vibration. So now run the second wire underneath the first ignition module. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, but once you get it in there, it's done. So I've got both wires. It was a bit difficult getting the second wire into the second ignition module there. But at this point, it's safe to try it out and see if it works. Perfect. So now it runs good and it turns off when it should. So I'm just going to reassemble the cowling and that job's done. So now just reinsert your cowling over here. If you have the part from the air filter, make sure it goes into there. I'm just going to stick it into the filter first. Now 
then just clip this grommet back into the shroud here. That's the breather tube. There's a 13 millimeter bolt that goes up here. Now the fuel pump bracket goes like this. And you got a second bolt that goes over here. Now make sure you secure your fuel pump back on. Now the little grill goes in like that. And you line up the two holes and put the two Phillips screws there. And last, the flywheel cover. Now when you're done this job, these are the parts you should have left over. Screw the nut and two wires, that's normal. You didn't do anything wrong. So remember, if your lawn tractor with the 14 horsepower Briggs Vanguard engine, the twin runs on one cylinder, or when you turn the key off, it doesn't want to go off right away, it could be your problem as what I repaired today. So thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you in my next videos.